first reading tonight comes from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. Without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet... The world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Darkness, darkness is the absence of light. The only way to remove darkness is to add light. Jesus was the light of the world coming to the darkness. The world was crying out for a savior. From the darkness, cries for light could be heard. Jesus, being fully God, heard these cries saw the darkness, and responded. He responded not by fixing things from afar, but by entering into the darkness to bring light. Jesus became flesh and blood to live among us. The world still cries out for a savior. Sin, evil, darkness is all around. But for the love of humanity, Jesus Christ moved into the darkness to offer light. As people who follow Jesus, who follow the light, we must ask ourselves if we spend our lives living only in the light or searching for places to bring the light. For many of us, we've been told that to be a Christian, we must avoid those dark places in our world for fear that the light in us would be extinguished by the darkness. But Christ offers us a different example a different narrative. The God who brings light and life to us leads us to places of darkness so that we can help spread Christ's light. There are 40 million slaves throughout the world. The slaves are trapped in all sorts of conditions, in brothels and brickyards, cocoa fields and boats and rice mills and houses. These slaves live in the darkest parts of our world. Out of the darkness, they cry for the light. International Justice Mission listens for the cries of the needy, the oppressed, and the violated. They receive tips about potential slaves and then begin their investigations. They search for the darkest places in the world and know that in order to bring light, they must enter those dark places. This guy had a little girl and he was a slave in a brick kiln. The the slave owner would not let him leave when his daughter was sick to seek medical treatment. And they said, you know what, she'll be fine, nothing will happen to her, just keep working. She turned for the worse, they begged to leave. He said, no, 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 Uh, finish your work first. And then his daughter died. And he literally had to, to bury her at the brick kiln, and the owner wouldn't even let him bury his own daughter until after he'd finished making his bricks. Bonded labor is slavery, where you're actually working out your loom and lose all the freedom that you have. 
it is usually on the basis of an advance, but then you belong to the owner after that. There is absolute restricted freedom of movement, restricted freedom of employment. You don't get the wages that you deserve. Somebody owns you and everything that you make. We have seen people trapped for generations on the basis of a very small loan amount, as small as three or five dollars. There are millions of people trapped under slavery, waiting for someone to show up. We are coming, we will find you, and we will free you. We will persevere till all are free. The next three songs, very short songs, are saying I want to tell you just a little bit about. Some of you are familiar with a, a prayer technique called Lectio Divina, where you take a scripture and you just pray it over and over and over until it comes into every bit of your soul and your consciousness. It's just repetitive praying. Well, there are songs that are called Tizé Choruses. Tizé is a place in France where Christian pilgrims from all over the world come, and they sing their prayers. And we've had Tizé uh, led music worship services uh, before. So tonight, I'm going to teach you just three different songs throughout this service. Uh, and we just, the words are on the screen or are going to be on the screen. And I'll sing it through once and then we'll just sing it over and over until it kind of embeds in our hearts and our souls. This service tonight is all about darkness and how Jesus came to pierce that darkness. So this chorus is called, When the Night Becomes Dark. So John and I will lead, and then you're welcome to just sing it. You can close your eyes if you'd like to. You can hum along. But let these words, these powerful words, most of them are taken right from Scripture, um, just kind of permeate your being and let Christ speak to us through these prayerful songs. When the night becomes dark, your love, O oh Lord, is a fire. Your love, O oh Lord, is a fire. When the night becomes dark, your reading comes from the book of Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 through 8. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus humbled himself, putting his own fears, needs, and wants aside, from moving from heaven to earth and from earth to death. This is a story of a God who moves towards that which we seek to avoid. On Good Friday, we are reminded that Jesus headed to Jerusalem, knowing that death was around the corner. He prayed in the garden, opening himself up to the reality that was in front of him. Jesus, in humility, humbled himself, taking the form of a slave, putting his own needs aside for the sake of our freedom and our lives. The Apostle Paul encourages us to have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. We are called to do nothing out of selfish ambition, but to always consider the needs of others. While we want to move to the places of light, the high places, the places of safety and security, our God, full of humility, runs towards the places of darkness and death. Avoiding darkness has not and will not ever overcome darkness. Only moving a light into the darkness can bring about this victory. May we have the mind of Christ. May we be people who are humble, who put the needs of others above ourselves. May we enter into places of darkness, following in Christ's footsteps in order to bring freedom and life. Those who fight human trafficking put the needs of others above themselves. The work is incredibly challenging for multiple reasons. Only a certain type of person can enter into this darkness and maintain their faith in God and humanity. Investigators prepare themselves spiritually to enter the places we have been taught to avoid. The places we do not want to go, the places that are darkest and most dangerous, are the ones that need the light the most. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, people with international justice missions step into dangerous places, go on raids, and in humility, put their lives on the line to save the most vulnerable in this world. Listen to this interview with a member from the IJM team who helped rescue six hidden girls from inside a brothel wall. On, on, uh, on last Saturday, as you mentioned, uh, we were able to rescue six girls after a rigorous uh, rescue operation along with Mumbai police. So as we entered the police, we could not find any girl there. And we were frantically looking for these girls for nearly 40, 45 minutes. So we kept looking, hitting at walls, trying to figure out a hollow space. Finally, after 40, 45 minutes, we could find one spot, which we then uh, requested the police to break open. And after a couple of minutes, as we bro broke that spot, there was about 2.5 feet wide little hollow space that we entered inside and uh, we, we heard girls crying inside and uh, we asked these girls to step out and then they were crawling and coming out and as they were coming out they were just crying and they were crying and we saw, we, we saw more than two, there were six girls inside and they came out. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, we were very happy to rescue all six of them and arrest once again all those four traffickers who, who were exploiting them. What was going through your head the moment you realized that there were really girls behind that wall? First reaction is shock. Uh, that, that how, how could you force uh, your girls like that? In fact, in this particular brothel, as we crawled inside that tiny little space, it opened into another big room, which was hidden from any human eye. 
and as we inquired, that room was used to break those girls. When I say break those girls means when the girls are brought new into this work, they refuse to this work. So they keep them inside that room. When they are ready, then they bring them out where they serve these customers. Wow, uh, it's just shocking to hear you describe this. Now, I know uh, so many people are going to be asking, how are the girls doing today and how many are in care now? Well, uh, just, to, just to the beautiful moment, even during the rescue is this. Uh, when, when they were crawling out of their cavity, they were crying. And, uh, and we all were like standing outside and, and watching them cry. Just after two, 10 minutes, I would say, 10 minutes, they were all smiling. As we talked to them, as we counseled them, they were all smiling. Smiling because they are free. They are free, and I would like to call it this way. Perhaps the distance between tears and smile is freedom. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust, in God I trust. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust. In God I trust, the Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust, in God I trust, the Lord is my light, my light and salvation. Our next reading comes from Luke 22, 39 to 46. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, pray that you may not come into the time of trouble. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. As followers of Christ, can we offer the prayer of Jesus up to God? We so often want heavy burdens removed from us. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to enter places of darkness. Can we put our own needs and agenda aside and say, not my will, but yours? Christ trusted that God would be with him and provide strength as he faced condemnation abuse, and the cross. 
We too can trust that God will be with us and provide strength no matter where God leads us. As we pray for God's will to be done in our lives, we recognize that we too will face tough situations. We recognize that we are called to move from places of comfort to places of uncertainty, fear, and darkness because Christ has called us to shine light. For those of us who have experienced the light, we must, we must search for those places of darkness and faithfully strike a match to watch Christ light up the world. Before every rescue operation with International Justice Mission, those participating gather for prayer. They pray for God's protection and God's will to be done. They know that chaos might ensue, but they recognize that chaos exists for those trapped in slavery. They know and trust that God will be with them each and every step of the way. IJM is focused on following Christ's call to bring light into the dark places of the world. For 20 years, its field workers have entered the darkest places of humanity in order to bring Christ's light. Through the grace of God, they have freed more than 49,000 people. This number represents people brought from darkness into light. They have also prosecuted more than 1,600 perpetrators. They have trained over 188,000 local authorities to help stop human trafficking. They have taught 121,000 church and community members to recognize and respond to violence. These numbers represent people who willingly enter the darkness in order to share the light of Jesus. Darkness has not and will not win. darkest night you, you kindle the fire that never dies away never dies away within our darkest night you kindle the fire that never dies away never dies This night you kindle the fire that never dies away, never dies away. Within our darkest night you kindle the fire that never dies away, never dies away. 
We know what happened to Jesus after he asked God's will to be done. He was arrested in the garden. He was condemned and mocked by the crowds. He was beaten. He was crucified. Our Lord breathed his last breath. Jesus was the light who came into the darkness, but the darkness fought hard to extinguish the light. This God who came to live among us, who came to bring freedom, light, and life, hung and died on a cross. Jesus came to experience humanity, and not only did he experience humanity, he experienced inhumanity. It's in the cross that Jesus connects with those who find themselves sold for bags of silver, beaten, abused, and betrayed. Those who cry out for God's freedom cry out to the Holy One who suffered injustice and captivity and cried out from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The cries of the most vulnerable among us resonate with Jesus who cried out from the cross. While we as humans try to run towards the light and away from death, on Good Friday, we are reminded that for the love of humanity, Christ traveled towards the darkness and towards death in order to bring light, freedom, and life. As Christians, we are called to walk the road Christ walked, to faithfully enter into the darkness in order to share Christ's light. We will now enter into a time of silent prayer and reflection. Christ cha challenged his followers to take up their cross and follow him. For the love of humanity, what cross will you bear? What darkness will you enter? I invite you into a time of silent prayer to reflect on the darkness in this world. There's darkness in the cocoa fields the brick kilns, sweatshops, and brothels. But the darkness does not only hide in the too often forgotten places of this world. There's darkness in our schools, our businesses, our families. In places where it seems as though light is prevailing, dark corners still exist. We know about them, but so often gravitate towards the light. Towards which dark corner is Christ calling you? I invite you to spend time silently praying now. Lord God, as we have named dark places that you are calling us to, we know that you are already there. In the darkest places of this world, God, you have gone to bring light and life. 
You bring healing and comfort in places where we can't imagine new beginnings. God, thank you for your example. Thank you for your bravery, your willingness to enter into those horrible places. Thank you for your willingness to enter the place of the cross. God, we are reminded of your sacrifice of the way that you turned yourself over, the ways that you were betrayed and beaten, and the fact that you breathed your last breath. Sin is heavy. Darkness is heavy. But God, you are a God who is strong. You are a God who brings light and life. For that God, We are grateful. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen.